welcome back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. It is no secret that Gen Z has gone through it socially, and a lot of people in older generations look down on us for that, but I don't really think that it is totally Gen Z's fault, and we have definitely started to create some interesting solutions that I want to share with you guys today. Before we dive into that, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. Obviously, just to put it out there, at the end of the day, Everybody's life is their own fault due to the things that they prioritize and the choices that you make. But to be fair, Gen Z has been in a different situation that really isn't their fault. And of course, the first thing we all think of is the COVID-19 lockdowns. And obviously they impacted everyone, but they especially impacted young people with developing minds on the cusp of adulthood. Because for people who were still in college, who were still in high school, they were almost to adulthood. They had more independence. They were, they were creeping out there. And then randomly on this day in March, they were whipped right back to their parents' house and their childhood bedrooms, taken away from their friends and immediately sheltered back where they were when they were, you know, 14 years years old. Came all that hard work. And that went on for at least a year, depending on where you lived in the country and how severe the lockdowns were in your area. And we know now that this took a major toll on people's mental health. I don't know why people didn't think that that would happen. Shocker. This was for our health, but it actually ended up hurting people. But the numbers do not lie. The psychiatric hospitalizations for young people skyrocketed, as did the suicidal ideation, along with depression and anxiety. We know this now is very well documented. Gen Z during the COVID-19 crisis, a comparative analysis on the differences between Gen Z, Gen and resilience, values and attitudes. There are reports and studies like this all over the internet now. I don't even know why we needed to study this. It was such common sense to know that this was going to impact people in a negative way. Spoiler alert, Gen Z was not as resilient as Gen X because you know what? We were 17 to 22 years old, very confused about what was going on, were not fully developed and were immediately brought back to childhood literally at the drop of a hat. We're working on it though. We are, and that's the point of this episode. Here's another article, poor mental health during lockdown, most common among your generation. Gen Z was more likely to experience high levels of depression, anxiety, and loneliness in the first COVID-19 lockdown compared to older adults. Along with mental health, a lot of my generation took a big hit with their social skills. So much so, and this is almost comical, that companies are having to go out of their way to train Gen Z on soft skills once they enter the workforce because apparently we are so socially stunted and that should not be funny, but it kind of is. Here's a Yahoo article about that. Gen Z is so lacking in soft skills after lockdown, the big four consultants are offering classes to help new hires fit in at work. Like guys, we can't even complain. We are literally getting handouts. The world is like, please, let's try to fix you. You very confused, sad generation. To see the full picture, we have to acknowledge that the other difficulty with Gen Z, and you know, some younger millennials have dealt with this too, is that we were raised totally online. We were the first generation to have social media from you know part of elementary school through middle school, through high school, and through college. Our entire lives were basically online. Our entire social lives, independent of our family, has been online in some way, shape, or form. And in general, just on a whole, this generation is made up of inside kids because of this. And this makes it so that we socialize very differently than other generations and very differently than the rest of the world. And objectively, this is less healthy because we don't have as much face-to-face -face communication in real life. And we all know that that is very important to a healthy and happy and long life. Gen Z is the loneliest generation and it's not just because of social media. The loneliness of Generation Z reflects not just rising social media use, but a broader decline in interactions with neighbors, coworkers, and church friends. And I honestly chalk that also back up to social media because we just spend so much much time scrolling online that even if we're not talking to people online, we are spending time online versus being outside with other people. And all of this is taking a toll. There's a New York Post article about it, antisocial behavior, why Gen Z struggles to make and keep friendships, San Diego Union Tribune, commentary, why Gen Z is the most connected generation, but also the loneliness. We spend so much time online, clicking all these buttons, getting all these likes, connecting with all these people digitally, but how many of those connections are actually meaningful? How many of those connections are deep? How many of them are real? How many do you have compared to what you have in real life because those are the most important ones. There is a huge difference between having friends online, communicating with people online, keeping those relationships going digitally, and having friends in person and nurturing those relationships. And I think that my generation might struggle with that. I know that I definitely do. It's just a completely different ball game. Because no matter how close you are with somebody that you know online or how well you think you know them, those two modes of friendship are drastically different and they require very different skills. You're not gonna use as many soft skills online as you are in real life. And Gen Z has mastered one of those. We have mastered the digital side, but really not the other when you look at us on a broad scale. Friend? Friend. 
course, we all know that making friends is not easy, especially as an adult. Let's all relax. Let's calm down, get in your Bond Charge sauna blanket, and you'll feel a lot better. And if you didn't know, Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. They can't give you friends, but hopefully they'll make you ready to go out and make friends. Their extensive range of premium wellness products help you sleep better, perform better, recover faster, reduce inflammation, and so much more. From blue light glasses to red light therapy, Bond Charge products help you naturally address the issues of our modern day way of life effortlessly and with maximum impact. My new favorite product from Bond Charge is their infrared sauna blanket. They sent it to me a couple of months ago and I have added it into my weekly wellness routine. The infrared sauna blanket has all kinds of benefits and it works by using infrared light, which heats the body directly rather than the air around you like in a traditional sauna that you would go to at the gym. That means that you are getting the same benefits at a lower heat, but of course you will still be sweating, which helps you flush out all those heavy metals and other toxins. It also raises your heart rate to that of physical exercise. So you're actually burning calories while you relax and you can burn up to 600 calories in just one session. Bond Charge ships worldwide, offers exceptional customer service, and comes with a 12-month warranty. So go to bondcharge.com slash cooper and then use code cooper15 to save 15% off at checkout. That is bondcharge.com slash cooper. Then when you're checking out, use cooper15 to save 15%. You will be relaxed, ready to tackle the day, ready to go out and make friends, all good things. Now, one thing stood out to me in this New York Post article that I mentioned a couple of seconds ago that I think that I can speak to personally, and they said, quote, during the pandemic, there was the lack of consistency. And this is a researcher and she said this as she was interviewing millennials and Gen Z about friendships during the pandemic. As you guys know, I did not have a ton of technology growing up. I obviously grew up with Gen Z. I've been around technology my entire life, but in my personal home, I did not have a cell phone until I was much older. We didn't even have a television. I was an outside kid. And even though I was homeschooled, I was very social and outgoing and I was not allowed online for most of my childhood. However, my life was not consistent at all. And so during middle school and high school, I was so incredibly lonely because of that. I would, you know, meet people and make friends no matter where I was. And I was very social and I would do fun things no matter where I was living. But then I would leave soon after. I would leave every six months, every four months. I would be bouncing around and it was hard to make long-term friends even though I loved the adventure and I loved acting. I loved what I was doing. And that was probably the one thing that I would change about my childhood because it made me so sad because I would try so hard. I would try to connect with people. I would try to keep those friendships going whenever I would leave, but it would just never work. And I was definitely a bit of a lonely kid and I just didn't have a strong community outside of my mom and a few family members. So even before this COVID-19 lockdown happened, I had experience with that inconsistency and it actually made the lockdowns easier for me because I kind of got it. And I was like, okay, this is just very normal. So I get what my generation was going through. I get how that feels. The article goes on and says, while school and work had traditionally been consistent shared experiences for young adults in past generations, these organizations no longer serve that purpose. Many people, Gen Z specifically, who are entering the workforce haven't necessarily had the experience of being able to make friends in the typical way, and they're starting a new job for the first time where they don't know anyone. And that last part cracks me up because it's like, Everybody has to learn that. And that's the one part where I pointed Gen Z and I'm like, you're not special. Everybody has to go in to a new job and not know anybody that's just part of life. You get over it, it's awkward, it's hard, you move on. But I still understand why it might be more difficult for my generation because we have been stunted by many, many things. Now, I told you all at the beginning that I thought that Gen Z had been finding some interesting solutions. And this goes back to the point that I've made in a few other episodes, that even with all of Gen Z's flaws and our misplaced trust and some of our very bad values and our definitely coddled online upbringing, Gen Z is very self-aware and they are very quick to notice when they have a problem. That is why fixing our mental health was the number one resolution for Gen Zers this year. We are the most sober generation because we realize that it's not good for us and we have a problem. We're driving the push back to flip phones because we know we are online too much and we wanna get away from that, we wanna disconnect more. And it's why we're leveraging social media, which we know very well, in unique ways to make friends in real life. There's a recent Washington Post article about it. Loneliness is taking friend-making apps mainstream. So. People are going out of their way online to say, hey, I'm struggling, I don't have a lot of friends, I'm gonna put myself out there and I'm going to try to connect with people. And they start doing this on social media. Online friend finding destinations from tiny Discord chat rooms to Reddit community boards to matchmaking apps like Bumble where you can swipe yes or no on the faces of potential companions. You know, they have Bumble BFF and all that stuff. Also Bumble networking, I think now for business things. They're filling the gap for young adults who want more platonic connections. That is if they can get past the perceived embarrassment of asking for friends. And that is what Gen Z is getting so good at. They don't care. They'll just say, hey, I 
I need some friends. Like there was, there was so sad. There was this little boy and he rang his neighbor's doorbell and it went viral on TikTok. He's probably 12 years old and he went up to his neighbor and he said, I just don't have any friends. Do you know any other kids in the neighborhood who might want to be my friends? Like the kids next door have been bullying me. I just really need help. This kid at 12 years old had the self-awareness to do that. Obviously he is not my age. He's not my generation, but I'm seeing that all over social media. People are just much more willing to ask for assistance and try to connect with people. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Do you want to go do karate in the garage? Yep. And the best part is they're actually meeting up in real life. These are not just digital connections. Michael Kotz, who organized the June meetup with Walton and others, said that looking for friends is the most common introductory post on their 10,000 member Discord forum, but people tend to disappear after that. At the meetup, Michael was flitting between clusters of people in his slick cropped blazer and neon orange beanie, letting the social vibes take shape naturally. Quote, I make a lot of events like this where there's a blob of people and an opportunity to meet them. And funnily enough, because I know that it is a very toxic place and it is a terrible, terrible app, the place that I am seeing the most of this take shape and form is actually on TikTok. Last month, there was this girl named Lauren and she made a video about how she had spent most of her young life alone and she had been struggling with her mental health and her birthday was coming up and she knew that she didn't have a ton of people to spend time with and share it with. So she posted this. She lives in Nashville. She doesn't have many people in her life and she would love for you to attend her birthday celebration. She said that she was going to be at the assembly food hall June 14th from 12 to five. So people have a lot of time to come in. It would mean the world to me if people came. I've spent the majority of my life isolated and lonely and it would be so awesome to meet and connect with people. So this video got almost a million views. She posted it at the beginning of June. Within days, it blew up. And then on her birthday, two weeks later, this happened. And I just like, it's so awesome. Like the fact that the internet was able to do that. We see so much crap on the internet. And we talk about how terrible it is. And there are so many corners of the internet that are actually awful and very creepy and very disturbing. It is still a social platform. If you leverage it correctly, you can meet people. And I think this goes to show one, it's amazing that she was willing to ask for help and say, hey, I, you know, I need this. But people were willing to show up. Like they did more than just liking it. They drove all that way. They showed up and they supported somebody probably because deep down they know that they need it too. And they were just grateful that somebody else posted it so that they could then participate. Somebody said, I love this. I'm glad you were brave and you put yourself out there. How amazing people do care. Somebody said humans can be awesome at times. Yes, they can. Hopefully this episode makes you a little happier than the normal episodes that show the <laughs> terrible sides of the world. This is not the only example of this. If you go on TikTok and you look up like inviting strangers to my birthday party, need people to spend time with, there are all of these different videos and people show up. One of my favorites is this girl in New York City. Her name is Marissa. And she went on a mission after a video of her ex-best friends went viral trashing her behind her back. Obviously, they were not her ex-best friends at the time. They were just her friends. Somebody overheard them and recorded them and posted them and said like, hey, if your name is Marissa and you live in New York, your friends are talking about you. And it was like awful stuff. They were trying to, you know, ice her out of plans, all this stuff. She created this whole movement. Here's an insider article about it. A viral TikTok exposed her friends for talking behind her back. Now she's on a mission to help people make new pals in real life. And she started something called the No More Lonely Friends and hosted huge meetups around the city and in a couple different states. Here she is hosting the picnic. Here's one of the videos. I think this was from the first one that she did. Anybody want to know what I would do if I didn't win? I guess we'll never know. Like that's a lot of people guys. Cause I think people will see those videos and they'll go, mm, that's kind of like cringy. Like, I don't want to go. I don't want to be awkward. Go get out of your comfort zone. It's amazing that somebody is taking strides to create that. And it is even more amazing that people are willing to put aside the awkwardness and actually show up and go because they know that in-person connections at the community is very, very important. Somebody said, I'm moving to New York city mid July. I'd love to be a part of something like this. Cause I know absolutely no one in New York. Somebody said, I teared up. Sometimes the internet can be so positively powerful. Another person said, you made a negative into a positive and I admire that. I've gone through a similar experience with friends and it was hard to deal with. I'm happy for you. And those are just like two examples that have stood out to me. Again, you can Google all of these. You can look at it on TikTok if you want to have some feel good videos. It is very, very cool. And I am sharing all of this because I hope it at least inspires some of you guys to step outside of your comfort zone and find creative ways to make friends. It is for your own good, truly. Put yourself out there, go to a meetup. It'll be awkward for sure. That's very normal. But lots of things in life are awkward. You just have to get over it. You will live, I promise. I've talked about Prager Force a lot, but when I lost a lot of my friends, in college after COVID and for political reasons, that is where I met some amazing people. Yes, it was weird at first to join a Zoom call with a bunch of people I didn't know. Again, you get over it. I'm telling you, you will benefit from this. Like we need community and Gen Z desperately needs <laughs> the social skills. Please go outside, touch some grass, try to make some friends. I am very happy that we at least know that we have some problems and we're trying to find creative ways to fix it. That's a positive thing in my book.
Thanks for watching this episode of the comment section. I hope you enjoyed it and that you maybe even learned something. If you've not already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss an episode.